Brilliant. Despite the fact that I've literally got here straight from covering the party conference, I'm going to go without notes. I'm probably going to forget both the deficit and the immigration. Um, right, it's one of those kind of small world moments, uh, because the first thing I ever covered, and I'm going to use this in the world's broadest sense, uh, for, yeah, the kind of first sort of proper bit of political journalism I did was uh, the Norwich North by-election. Because our student paper decided, I think, I, in, I think maybe as a punishment, that we would send one of us to follow the student political societies as they went out on the doorstep. And because I was either late or too hungover to go, no, 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 don't do that to me, I ended up with the Labour Club, which, I mean, I, lots, of those, lots of those people were and are very good friends of mine, but... You cannot imagine a worse time to have campaigned alongside Labour activists than 2009. The, the level of hatred <laughs> towards actually a, a bunch of very, you know, like, you know, people had, you know, none of, none of us were, were in the Brown government. I was there as a journalist. And the number of times I'd say to people with scary dogs, oh, actually, I'm a journalist. Your scary dog needs to talk to these people here. <laughs> But there were, you know, kind of, so I'd stand there watching these people talk and get shouted at and get told them they were to blame for expenses and for Iraq and for basically everything that was going wrong in the world and the fact that um, it was actually a terrifying time because we, they, most of us were finalists. So it's like, oh, it's your fault that none of you are ever going to have jobs and you're going to have to live on the streets. Um, it was a stressful time. And there was something one woman said to me which has stayed with me. She said, the reason why I'm not voting for... Um, Name. Oh, uh, the reason why I'm not going is since I started watching the news, it's been nothing but terrible. <laughs> and I think it's very, very easy to fall into the trap of since I started watching the news, it's been nothing but terrible. And obviously, when you're talking about people being disillusioned, people like me do have to take some of the blame. Yeah, I am partially responsible for the ways. Very, very small one. But, you know, for the ways that politicians are seen. But, you know, I was thinking as I was coming up on the train, yeah, you know, when I was born, my school didn't have an outside, didn't have an inside loo, and none of the schools in my borough had inside loos. When this government took office, Babies who looked like me, who were waiting for adoption, spent much longer waiting because it was much harder to adopt a child who didn't look like you until Michael Gove changed that. I mean, I have many, many objections to our current government. Uh, I imagine many people here have many objections to, probably some of them different to mine, but that, that is a huge transformation thing. And those are just two things. You know, in the time we've been alive, you've, we've been able to go from a gay person turning up at the hospital and being turned away from their partner's bedside to be able to go in and say, my husband's in there. I mean, I cannot think of a single product, I say this to someone whose iPhone is over there, basically having given up the ghost, I cannot think of a single product which has delivered as many brilliant advances in the human condition than democracy has in the last 20 years. And I say this to someone who, I, you know, I will make fun of politicians, Tomorrow I will do it the day after, no I won't, Saturday I will do it again on Monday. <laughs> um, but, but really, honestly, I, when people say they're disillusioned with politics, I even think, well, what, what more did we want? I mean, yes, there are huge problems. I find Nigel Farage and Nick Clegg incredibly irksome. But, you know, like, but the idea that, and I, feel, I just feel it's become very easy for us to go as a generation yeah, we're kind of generation, why does so much bad stuff happen to us? So, like, why can't we own houses? Why, you know, why do we live in an era of UKIP and rubbishy coalitions? And, you know, why have all the jobs been destroyed by the internet? And it's really, really easy to say that other people are to blame. And, of course, a little bit other people are to blame. But if, if we don't take ownership of politics, if we don't try and change who we're governed by, then ultimately we'll always be governed by fairly inadequate, pretty rubbish people. And then, it's, yeah, it's really easy to be Russell Brand. It's really easy, and yeah, a lot of my friends love Russell Brand, but it, actually I, I liked Russell Brand a lot before we kind of went into this weird New Statesman phase. And it's like, <laughs> I say it's someone who has worked with New Statesman, it's a lovely, lovely thing. <laughs> uh, like, um, yeah, it's really, really easy to go, aren't they all terrible? Well, maybe we don't like some of them. I'm, I'm willing to accept people don't like David Cameron. I'm willing to accept people don't like Ed Miliband. 
But it's really difficult to argue that they're the same. One of them thinks that the energy market works better as a free act. The other one wants to regulate it. One of them wants to have a referendum on the EU. The other one thinks that our future is part of effectively a federal Europe. One of them wants to raise uh, the minimum wage to a living wage. The other one wants to leave it, leave it to the LPC. These are big differences about the future of most people's lives. Yeah, I just think that we cannot as a generation say that the biggest problem with politics today is the people who participate in it. And I think actually the biggest problem is the people who don't participate in it. And I'm sorry to say that mostly those people are us. Thank you.